All right. Good evening. We're so glad. Yeah, it's dark because you wanted to sit this way. We're so glad to be here. We're so glad that you are joining us. Oh, now you want to move? We're so glad you're here. Hi, everyone. We're trying to get adjusted to the light. Please take this time and share. Please invite other people to join us. It is dark, and that's because where the light was. Okay, let's go shift that. Karen didn't want to sit where the light was because she didn't want y'all to see the Budweiser sign. <laughs> but most people got Budweiser's in their closet, in their refrigerator. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Is that better? And then our friends with us today are sitting to our right. So we're y'all see us doing this. We're going to be looking at them and waving. <laughs> it's all right. Listen, and more people can come. We're waving whoever comes. But right now, we want you to bow with us in prayer. God, we thank you. We celebrate you. We praise you for this day. God, as we deal with these topics, these raw topics about relationships, God, we just ask that you give everyone an open ear, open heart. God, it may sting. It may hurt. It may cause us to think and reflect. But God, allow us to seek you. Mm -hmm. And God, allow us to be able to measure our own relationships based on your standard. We love you and praise you and give you all honor and glory. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, we're glad you're on. We, this is the Life Center Live. I am Napoleon. This is Karen. And we're so glad to be here as we deal with relationships. This month, mm -hmm. we've been dealing with relationships in the raw. And if you have not caught any of the lessons, man, listen, this stuff, this is real stuff. And Tonight's going to be another one. I'm, I'm kind of really, I don't even know, but we're going to work with it because I don't even know. It's kind of rough, but it, we're going to be all right. Um, we invite you guys to um, join us in asking questions. We had some great questions last week that we were able to answer on live. So drop your questions below as we go through the scriptures tonight. All right. All right. Yeah. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29. Make sure you got your notes open. Genesis chapter 29. And we're going to begin at verse number 31. Genesis 29, beginning at verse 31. Genesis 29, beginning at verse 31. And it says this, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her womb but Rachel was barren. So Leah conceived and bore a son and she called his name Reuben. For she said, the Lord has surely looked on my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, his name was called Levi. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Flip over to chapter 30. It says, now when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was aroused because Rachel against Rachel. And he said, am I in the place of God who has withheld you from the fruit of your womb? So she said, here is my maid Bilal. Go into her and she will bear a child on my knees that I may also have children by her. Then she gave him Bilal, her maid, his wife. And Jacob went into her and Bilal conceived and bore Jacob a son. Then Rachel said, God has judged my case. And he has also heard my voice and given me a son. And she called his name Dan. And Rachel's maid Bilal conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Then Rachel said, with great wrestlings, I have wrestled with my sister. And indeed, I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zipla, her maid, and gave her to Jacob as wife. And Leah's maid Zilpa bore Jacob a son. Then Leah said, the troop comes. And she called his name Gad. And Leah's maid Zipla bore Jacob a second son. And Leah said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Now Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. And Rachel said to Leah, please give me some of your son mandrakes. But she said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? 
would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And Rachel said, therefore, he will lie with you for your son's mandrake. When Jacob came from the field that evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, you must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given him, given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Issachar. Then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Jacob, Leah said, God has endowed me with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun. Afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Verse 22, then God remembered Rachel and God listened to her and opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So, so she called his name Joseph, and the Lord shall add to me another son. I want to talk tonight from this thought, your womb won't win him. Your womb, your womb, W-O-M-B, won't win him. Your womb won't win. It's amazing when we're in relationships that oftentimes we think, and we've dealt with this with manipulation, we oftentimes think that we can win the affection of someone by what we can offer to them. So we find ourselves offering and giving ourselves to them in ways that are uncomfortable in an effort to keep them. And we do strange things. We, we, we go to extreme lengths to keep people when the reality is if they loved us they should stay without us trying to manipulate them to stay one, one of the best examples of that is in this text in this text we find a battle of births between leah and her sister rachel where they go back and forth trying to have a child that's going to win the love of their husband, Jacob. And they go to some extreme lengths to get the love of Jacob. Now, to be honest with the text, there's some things we need to know. First of all, they're married. But oftentimes, this battle of birthings doesn't occur in the married context. Oftentimes, it comes from just people that are laying with the man. And so they're dating, they're in relationship, and they end up getting pregnant. They want the man. He may not want them, but they keep getting pregnant in an effort to try to keep him. Um, and, and so, but in this context, they're married. But the strange thing is, even in their marriage, they're going to some extreme lengths. So I, I started questioning the text because I think that beyond this point of marriage, I think it's important to see that, that, um, we often either engage in manipulation to keep a relationship or we engage in manipulation to keep the relationship wanting us. And I think we're going to see both of that. So it's not just Leah and Rachel. There's also some Jacob behaviors that need to be explored. So, so the question we're going to wrestle with for this next little bit of time is, how do you know you're trying to win him? How do you know you're trying to win him? Well, I, and, and this is just going to be a series of questions, and I just want you to think about it as we look at the text. The first question is, were you pursued or were you just placed? Um, if you know the story, Jacob left, fled his brother Esau and ended up at his uncle Laban's house. When he got to his uncle Laban's house, he saw this woman, Rachel, who he fell in love with. And in order to get Rachel, Laban said, you got to work for me for seven years. And the text says he loved Rachel so much that the seven years felt like one day. And so at the end of the seven years, it was time to have the wedding, it was time to have the, the wedding, the marriage bed. In fact, it's right there in the text. Um, if you go up to chapter 29, we're still in 29, and um, verse number 19. Says, and Laban said, it's better that I give her to you 
Laban, verse number 19 says, better I give her to you than I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. And Laban gathered together all the men in the place, made a feast, and it came to pass that evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her, and Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter, Leah, as a maid. So it came to pass in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. All right. All right. So, so um, were you pursued or were you placed? So, so you have to think about, are you the one he really wanted or are you the one he ended up with? Um, so, so you think about this in the terms of the club. I remember the club. I never went here. This wasn't open. But I remember up the street, it was Tracy's. And that may be before your time. But Tracy's used to have wing night. And you'd go to Tracy's, and you might get to Tracy's and see the one you want. But by the time 2 o'clock came, you had to settle for who was left. So the reality is, sometimes you lay with someone, not because that's who you're pursuing, but that's who's placed there, who's left. So, so as you're thinking about, are you trying to win him? Are you the one he really wanted or did he just settle for you? Um, here, here's the next thing. Was the baby planned or did you just get pregnant? Um, text says her wound was open. He lay with her, but he didn't know she was going to get pregnant. And be, they're married. They're married. But I'm talking about in the context of relationship, because sometimes in relationships, you lay down with somebody and you don't know they're getting pregnant. Like you don't go into them expecting them to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. You lay with them. And I, I'm not condoning laying with them before marriage. I'm saying this happens. Mm -hmm. Right. Real talk. Real talk. You, you end up taking them home from the club. You lay with them. And they get pregnant. So, so were you planning for the baby or did you just end up getting pregnant? These are questions. We're trying to figure out if you're, if you're trying to win him. Um, did you know? And the reality is, real talk amongst people that look like us, we don't do baby planning. Mm. I mean, even while we were married, our babies weren't planned. Mm -mm. I think you planned corn, though. I think he was trying to keep me. So you playing corn. <laughs> but I remember oh. coming home in Toledo and you telling me you were pregnant with Noel. Yeah. We never talked about it. We never said, oh, I'm going to adjust my eating habits. I'm going to, uh, I'm yeah. going to do. No. We just did that. Right. What y'all thinking over there? No, we just <laughs> you don't know what y'all saying. We just. Oh, OK. There's a new married couple over there. They talking. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, 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 so the reality is, the reality is, you didn't write the question. How do you know you were trying to win him? You didn't, the question was, was the baby okay. planned or did you get pregnant? I know you fussing at me. Here, here, here's the question for Jacob, though. If you don't love her, why'd you keep laying with her? That's the question. Because the text says he didn't love her. It says, when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, he opened her wound and kept Rachel's wound barren. Okay, which means, this is real. Why are you laying with the one you don't love? And hold on, real talk. Isn't it sometimes the one you don't love that ends up getting pregnant? Hmm. Remember, it's the one that you took home that was placed there, not the one you wanted. So that's the one that ends up getting pregnant. And here's the crazy thing, because the text says she had Reuben and said, the Lord will surely love me. Then she got pregnant again, which means Jacob kept lying with her, right. kept laying with her. Okay. Um, ooh, next question. Are you choice or are you just convenient? Are you the one who's always available are you the one he really wants to be with? He really wanted Rachel, but Leah kept making herself available. Woo, God, this is rough. This is rough. This is rough. 
Um, but we, yeah, you 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 really want Rachel? Why do you keep going to Leah's house? You really want Rachel? Why you keep investing time with Leah? So so Leah gets pregnant with Reuben. You trying to raise Reuben, but you really want Rachel. But Rachel's barren, so she doesn't have the same fruit to offer you that Leah does. So you keep to Leah. Oh man, Woo, God. So. You did post that question. Thank you, baby. You're so awesome. So, so, so you keep going back to Leah. She keeps getting pregnant. Here's the next thing. Hold on. Um, are you naming the child to change his mind? So she names the first one Reuben, saying, "The Lord has surely shown favor. Therefore, my husband will love." And she, what's your name, the second son? I should have my phone uh, open. No, no, no. Simeon. So, so are you naming the children to try to win his affection? Which is manipulation. Which is manipulation. Mm -hmm. Are you naming the children? Are you having children and then naming them to try to influence his decision to love you? You keep saying this son means he, this son means he loves me. This son means God is paying attention to me. She has a third son and says this son is going to be named Levi cuz I'm giving him a third son. And here's the next question. Do you feel each pregnancy gives you purpose? And a whole lot of people end up getting pregnant multiple times because they think each pregnancy increases their purpose in life. They believe each pregnancy gives them purpose. So, so they eat, they get pregnant thinking each time they get pregnant, he's going to love me more. Oh, man, he's going to love me more. He's going to finally pay attention to me. It's right in the text. I'm not making this up. Right there, Genesis chapter 29. Look at her frame of thinking. Now, this is Leah. Now, again, in this context, Leah is married. But when we're talking about trying to win him with your womb, oftentimes you're not married. You're trying to convince him to marry you. So look at what she says. She says this. She says, first of all, I'm going to name him Reuben, for the Lord has surely looked on my affliction, and now my husband will love me. Now, what was her affliction? First of all, she was unloved. Okay, what'd you say, Eli? No, 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 jump on in there, Doc. Does that apply, as we so to speak, of saying that you're in love with the woman? It, does that change, such as you loving the person that you're with? You need to have kids. Does that change the argument? Would that be? So, so the question is: Does this adjust when you actually love the person? Um, I think, I think when you love them and you're purposeful and trying to marry them and be with them, I think that will eliminate the Leah need anyway. So, if you love them. If, if 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 Jacob loved Leah, there would no be no need in the keeping of having children trying to win his love. But he loved Rachel, and Leah knew it. Leah knew. Uh -oh. Huh? Oh, big mama named Rachel. I'm sorry. Is she from the Bible though? She ain't. She wasn't named Bukwisha. Bukwisha ain't in the Bible. <laughs> so 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 look look now so. Then she says, she bore another son and said, because the Lord has heard I'm unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Then she conceived a son, a son again and said, now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. Okay, now can we get a little deeper? She's not saying this to Jacob. She's talking to herself. So she's battling with the emotional scar of being unloved, and she's justifying why she keeps laying with him because eventually she's still being rewarded in her mind by God with more children. Ooh. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm not loved, but I keep getting, oh God, I keep getting pieces of him to love me. Which are these children? Mm. But doesn't that highlight self-esteem 
negative self talk. Well, you you ha let's let's go back up a little bit. I thank you, thank you, Karen. Um, because if you read up earlier, it says that late that Leah had a weak eye. Most people think that means she was cross-eyed, so she was not pleasing to the eye. Yeah, verse number 17, 16 says, now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah. The name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were delicate, but Rachel was beautiful to form and appearance. So in other words, Leah was not the most attractive, but she could bear children. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. So she overcompensated mm -hmm. her self-esteem by using her gift that she knew she had. Mm -hmm. I can bear kids. So as long as I can get them in the bed, I can get them. And I think if I get them in the bed, in my mind, I'll keep giving them kids. Eventually, he'll love me. Woo! Man. Man. Okay. So, so here, here's another question. Again, Jacob, listen, we're on child number four now. If you don't love her, why do you keep laying with her? You know, it, 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 and it, I see this, I've seen this recently on Facebook, um, where guys get on Facebook and dog out their baby mamas. And my question is, you have multiple children by them. Why do you keep going there? If you don't love her, why do you keep laying with her? Here's another question for the guys. Have you settled because you feel God set up this situation? In other words, the woman he wants is Rachel. She can't have children. But the woman he ends up laying with is Leah. He wants children. And every time he lays with Leah, he gets a child. So maybe he's considered that maybe God has given him permission to keep laying with Leah because she gives him what he wants. And oftentimes, to be honest, many of us justify who we lay with based on the benefit that comes from laying with them. We keep saying, we say that maybe, maybe it's okay for me to lay with her because this. Maybe it's okay for me to lay with her because of this. So we repeat the cycle. No one is not who we want, but because. Leah specialized in having babies, which means she specialized in setting the atmosphere for romance to take place, which means she knew how to wine and dine Jacob. She knew exactly what to do to get the act to come to fruition, and she knew what to do to get boys every time. So she specialized in it. So, so maybe she was settling. Maybe she was content being in a relationship with someone who didn't love her because in her mind, he didn't have to say he loved her. He showed her he loved her by participating in the act. And oftentimes we mislead people by participating in the act. By participating in the act. That might have been the Lord. <laughs> By participating, maybe we hit a jackpot. We sometimes don't say we love, but feeling, feelings are built mm -hmm. because they receive our action as a sign of love. Right? So in those days, the consummation of marriage was a major part of, of, of closing the marital deal. And so he continued to lay with her, though he didn't like her, but it doesn't say that. She kept trying to win his love, which really means sometimes they probably should have had a conversation. In fact, here's the next question. Does he talk to you or just conduct the transaction with you? Because mm, the text never says they have a conversation. The text says she kept asking or kept saying, this child will make him love me. So she's talking to herself trying to justify why she keeps laying with him and why she keeps producing children, but she never has a conversation. And you gotta be careful if you're in a relationship and all y'all do is lay together and y'all never take the time to have a conversation. Do you know his dreams? 
Do you know his aspirations? Do you know what she wants to be when she grows up? Do you know what excites her? Or do you just know how to lay with her and have kids? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. so they never talked she talked to her babies she talked to God she talked to herself but she never talked to Jacob but why do you think that is though why don't why don't why do you think do you think it's difficult at that point to have a conversation it could be or maybe she was just happy to have him for the moment for the moment. For the moment. I mean, because cause, cause if she wants him to love her and she thinks every child is going to make her make him love her and he keeps coming around, then she is saying he loves me this time. But after the transaction is over, he leaves again. Woo. Mm -hmm. So she keeps telling herself this time he loves me. She lays with him again gets pregnant again, and he's gone again. Because after he leaves her, he always goes back to Rachel. Mm. Here's the crazy thing, because they don't say it in the text, but you have to understand it. In order for him to know Rachel is still barren, that means he's still sleeping with Rachel. So he's sleeping with his wife. And his wife. They're both his wives, though. Oh, okay. In that context, they're both his wives. But think about it in the terms of not a relationship. So you know he has somebody, yet he keeps sleeping with you. He's sleeping with you, and every time he sleeps with you, you feel he loves you because he keeps coming back. And you believe what he says when he says, you are providing me children or he says something's not right at home but the reality is in order for him to truly say that he has to be testing what's happening at home in order for him to know that rachel is still barren he still has to be laying with her the same time he's laying with leah it's just that leah's producing fruit Mm. No, questions yet? no questions everybody quiet i guess we're just listening here's the next question at what point i said at what point uh oh if you know she is fertile why are you still fooling around with her the same way so you're not married or him and rachel Oh, we we'll get to that in a second. Tanya, you on it. You on it. You on it. God, I ain't get to that verse yet. So we're still in chapter 29. But in chapter 20, chapter 30, they have a conversation. So, so him and him and him and Leah, right? He keeps laying with her. And every time he lays with her, theoretically, she gets pregnant. Now it's probably more times than that. But every time she lays with her, she gets pregnant. So if you know she's fertile. Why do you still keep fooling around with her the same way? So in, in our context, you ready? If she's fertile and she's having babies, that means you're having sex with her raw, right? So if you, if you know she's fertile, why are you still risking raw to lay with her? Okay. Maybe that's not the right question. Here's the next question. Have you translated the laying to mean I love you? In your mind, when he comes to you and lays with you, in your mind, do you mean, does that mean to you he loves you? A woman sometimes, yes, is a very emotional being. Okay. So we attach that to he has some kind of feeling for me because he's here. Mm. But men don't typically think that, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes we do, but okay. sometimes it's the transaction. Right. And sometimes in the act, we say things. To get what you need. To get what we need. Mm -hmm. You know, even in, 
Baby, I'll wash the car. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, I need to wash the car. You do. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's the next question. Do you keep wishing that this one will make him act right? So Leah's had baby number one. She's had baby number two. She's had baby number three. She's had baby number four. Do you think that she's thinking that this one will make him act right? Mm -hmm. This one's gonna be the one. This one's gonna be the one. And even if it's not children, women, if he keeps coming back, are you thinking that maybe this time he he finally saw the light? This meal is gonna keep him. This gift is gonna keep him. This 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 trip is gonna keep him. This time together is gonna keep him. How how often do we think that the next time we got him? Okay. Um, ah, Jacob, this is a question for Jacob. Is she the one you want or the one who will give it up? Hmm. Now, in their context, they're married. Again, they're married. But when you're thinking about being with two people and going back and forth, and you think about the fact that a woman keeps producing children or keeps making herself available, even though she knows she's not the one, is it, do you keep coming back as a man? Do you keep coming back because she keeps making herself available? Or do you keep coming back because she is the one? But if she was the one, would you have to come back or would you just stay? Or do you keep your options open as if to say, I'm waiting for that right sign mm. to show me she's the one? I think that, that sounds more like right. So I'm waiting. So I keep going back and forth until somebody does something. I, I got my cake and I can eat it too and have the icing and everything else. So, so I keep trying and eventually somebody's going to ring the, the bell and make the decision for me. Because it may be too much for you to make the decision because it holds you accountable and you have to choose. Mm. And maybe I've gotten attached. <laughs> Look. Maybe, maybe I've gotten attached to the openness of one. Right? So I've gotten attached to Leah. Even though I want Rachel. I've gotten attached to Leah. But you want Rachel and Leah for two different reasons because you can't find them all in one person. Woo! That's it. So Rachel looks good, and if she could have children, I would be with yeah, Rachel. Yeah, but she can't. So Leah can have kids for me, but she ain't really who I want. She don't have the total package. No. Mm. Man. Woo! What y'all think? Yeah, y'all quiet. We don't get tiny. We almost at your conversation. We about to turn the page. Ah, so so here we go. Let's flip to the page to chapter thirty. When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob. So here's the difference between Leah and Rachel right there. Leah's laying down, but when Rachel gets fed up, she talks to Jacob. She has a conversation with him. So, so Leah keeps laying with him, even though he still doesn't love him, love her, and she never talks to him about it. But the text says, as soon as Rachel realized she wasn't bearing Jacob any kids, she said to Jacob, give me children or else I die. In other words, my life has no value if I don't have kids because all your time is spent with Leah. Who has kids. Who has kids? So how can you say you love me, but yet you keep laying with her? Yeah. Right. You, so, 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 so Eli says she, he ain't putting in the work with the wife. He's putting in the work with the other wife who's giving him the, not the one he wants. He's putting in work at the other house. But isn't that a lot of work? <laughs> That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. But he's working it. Yeah, but that's not 
ideal. That's not how it should be. Though. Yeah, right. yeah. It, it should be. I mean, I know that's where we are. I know that's how we live, but that's not how it should be. And I think that's what Eli was saying. If he would have spent all his energy with Rachel, who's to say she wouldn't have gotten pregnant earlier? Because she was communicating. Yeah. She was, you know, having that conversation and getting to know him and that you have that intimacy that way. And, and you know, that that's real. Re real talk is when you have spent your time outside of your relationship, you realize that if you would have just spent your time in the relationship, everything you was trying to seek out of the relationship, you would have found in the relationship. Right, right, right. Yeah. Everything I thought I needed out there, I found was really in here. Mm -hmm. But I didn't take the time to find it in here because it was so easily accessible out there. But now that I found it in here, it's, it's no need in going out there. So, so if Rachel, Rachel spoke up. And so here's the thing. If you find yourself in a relationship where you feel that you're not getting the attention you need, you need to be able to speak up. Communicate. You need to say, look, babe, look, before you go out to the club, mm -hmm. I need you to spend some time and talk to me. Why do you have that need to go out? Why are you going out to karaoke? on Thursday night. <laughs> or why can't we go together? Or why can't we go together? Or why can't you wait till I'm not working on a Thursday night so I can go with you? Mm. Mm. <laughs> 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 Too bad. I'm messing with you. But the reality is you gotta have these conversations. Right. You know, why? Because relationships require communication. If you don't, if you can't communicate, you don't have a relationship. It's not a relationship. All you have is land. Right. If you can't communicate, then all you have is a Leah relationship. Mm -hmm. Where you provide a service and she provides fruit. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what do you give up when you can't get him what he wants? This is so crazy because look at what happens. Rachel, being frustrated, then offers up her maid Bilal to Jacob. So she can't give him what she thinks he wants. So she then throws another person in the mix. She offers up her handmaiden. More dysfunction. And so maybe it's not a handmaiden, but what are you giving up? What are you offering up to keep him? What 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 are you what are you allowing to happen mm -hmm. to keep him? What are you ignoring? What are you saying is okay? It wouldn't have been okay, but now that you're desperate, it's okay. Mm. What lows are you willing to go for, for the one you love? This is crazy because she's his wife, but she offers up her handmaiden to be his wife also, just to give her a child. Because she's barren. Because she's barren. At this moment. At this moment, she's barren. But but psychologically, how do you think that's going to make her feel? He lays with her sister, he gets babies. He lays with her maid, he gets babies. He lays with her, he gets nothing. But because I want you to lay in my house more, I'll give you my handmaiden just to keep you home. And then make sure that and call that baby mine. But every time I look at the baby, I see you, I see the handmaid, I never see myself. Mm -hmm. So even though I call it my child, in the back of my mind, I know it ain't my child. And one day the child is going to get old enough to say, you ain't my mom. Even though you feed me, even though you clothe me, even though I live at your house, you're not my mom. Right. Mm. Do you ever feel jealous of the other baby mama? Look at what she says. Rachel says, Rachel envied, that's what the text says, her sister. So in other words, even though she was prettier, even though she had it going on, she envied her sister 
because her sister could have babies. Do you ever find yourself, that's, that's what this is, half, this is about, do you ever find yourself envying the one who gave your spouse or your boo something you couldn't give? Do you ever find yourself, e even if their relationship is dysfunctional, like all he did was lay with Leah. He didn't talk to Leah. He didn't do any of that. But she still envied Leah because Leah could say at the end of the day, I gave him something you couldn't give. Mm. And how often then do we play that card as justification for either why we're with them too or when we want to throw something in your face? We say, well, they may not be, but at least they could. Or they may not have now, but at least they did. Or they did this. In fact, psychologists say, and this may be a sidebar, psychologists say that oftentimes there is a snapshot of every relationship that remains etched in the mind as people go into new relationships. Mm -hmm. And they say that this snapshot is only the best moments of that relationship. So in other words, if you caught hell in a relationship, in your mind, you only remember that little good piece, which often leads the emotional tie for you to go back. But when you go back, you remember all the other stuff. Mm -hmm. But in your mind, there's still a tangible choice because of that little snapshot. So can you imagine the conversation Rachel and Jacob had? Because even though he's sitting with Rachel and says he loves Rachel, there's a piece of Leah that's etched in his mind mm -hmm. that is the fact she can bear children. Eli, what you about to say? At the end. We, that's at the end. Okay. So she finally does. So, so, so this is all prior to. So, so eventually she becomes exactly who Jacob wants. And she becomes that after the back and forth gets a little bit out of control. So do you think that, that um, Jacob and Rachel took matters into their own hands mm. and not allow God to work? it out that she eventually gets becomes pregnant so 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 that's good oh good that's good so let's remember who rachel is okay. i'm trying to remember who she is Hi. Ah, okay so so rachel let's remember who jacob is jacob is the grandson of abraham mm -hmm. and when abraham couldn't have babies with sarah sarah got frustrated and ended up giving um, Abram to her handmaiden, Hagar. Right. And they ended up having Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Right? Same concept. Repeat the cycle. With Rachel's impatience, she then offered up her handmaiden, Bilal, to Jacob, mm -hmm. thinking that that was going to make things better. Mm -hmm. But no matter what she offered up, it didn't take the place of the fact she couldn't provide for Jacob what Jacob wanted, all right? And you need to understand that there is nothing you can offer up to take the place of what's actually missing. You can buy him more clothes, that's not gonna make him love you. You can take him on trips, that's not gonna make him love you. You, you can buy a pole and put it in the bedroom, that's not gonna make him love you, right? because it doesn't take the place of what he actually wants, which is he wants a family mm -hmm. with Rachel. Right. All right. Um, how do you handle when you're the one he loves, but she is where he laid? Yep, we take things, we take things and not good, that's it. Well, how do you handle when you're the one he loves, but she is where he laid? Remember, he loved Rachel, but he kept laying with Leah. He loved Rachel, but he kept laying with Bilal. 
And eventually, he laid with Zilpah, who was Leah's handmaid. That's three women? That's three women who were giving him babies and not the one he really wants the baby from. All right? Ah, here's a good question. What makes being with him worth burying your real emotion? Why do you stay? Why do you stay when you know he doesn't love you, but he loves you enough to lay with you? Why do you stay when even though you're the one he loves, he still goes out and sees them? What, what, why are you suppressing your own emotions for his sake? Goes back to that settling you were talking about earlier. Okay. Um, you know, and that rationalization, that whole self talk of saying, well, maybe, you know, if I stay, then things are going to work out or I'm not good enough or what have you. Mm. It goes back to thinking that, that uh, what do we call scarcity? Yeah, we call yeah, it yeah. Scarcity? scarcity syndrome. The scarcity syndrome right. is this the scarcity syndrome is, um, I don't think there'll be anybody else to love me. I don't think there's somebody else. I don't want to go back out there and start looking. So I settle for where I am because at least where I am, I'm somewhere. I'm not where I want to be, nor am I with who I want to be with, but maybe there'll not be another person to love me like that. Because in the text, listen, there are no other men names mentioned, which would lead you to believe that there are no other men they could have chosen from. Now, again, in this context, this text, they're married. So I need to say that. But now we put it in real life, there, there are some women who are still holding on to the, to the illusion that they're eventually going to get a chance to be with the person again. Right. And there's a difference between illusion and ideation and reality. Yeah. So, you know, if you stay living in the illusion of, oh, maybe one day, maybe one day, when are you ever going to live in reality and accept it for what it really is? And even if he comes every now and then to provide service, if he doesn't stay, then he's still not yours. Illusion. It's illusion. illusion. So he hits you up every now and then in your DM. He inboxes you. He pops over to the house. But he still has to be gone before morning. Mm -hmm. Illusion. Okay. Have, 12, minutes. 12 minutes. Have you ever complicated the relationship by including things to keep him? Have, have you ever complicated the relationship? So look, um, in order to get him, when Rachel couldn't get him, she offered up Bilal. When Leah couldn't have no more babies, oh, 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 yeah, Richard, I thought you was going to be here, but at least you popped in self-sabotaging your confidence there you go so you sell yourself short for the purpose of saying you have somebody right he may not he, he, he may not be there full time but i got his baby so eventually he gonna have to come see me he gotta see them he gotta see them if he comes to see right them. that's what i'm gonna say because some men don't necessarily think that yeah yeah but i'll give you the illusion because I'll talk good in your ear and say, baby, have my baby. You have me. Mm. So, so, so when you start throwing your own stuff in and trying to win him, do you complicate the relationship? It shouldn't take bells and whistles for him to come see you. If he loves you, he should be able just to come. All right. If you know you are fertile and, and your fruit have value, I, I don't even know where I was going with that, but I started thinking about how they started counting the kids. They started taking a head count. So-and-so has six, so-and-so has four, so-and-so has another one. Um, so so it, it becomes less about a relationship and more about who can give the most children. A child count? It's a child count. <laughs> Look at what it says. It's right there in the text. Verse, verse, Rachel's maid, Bilal, conceived again. She conceived again. Leah saw that she could stop bearing, so she took Zilpah, gave her maid to Jacob. 
Zip was made, boy, I'm a son. Leah said, here comes the truth. She called his name Gad. Leah's made Zip a boy, Jacob a second son. Leah said, I'm happy for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher. So if you look at the count, it's like six to five, six to four, right? Here's the next question. Have you included the other children in these affairs? So Reuben goes out and gets some mandrakes. And what's mandrakes? They're like a fruit. Okay. Ra Rachel wants the mandrakes. Leah says, you took my man, now you want to take my son's mandrake. Rachel says, well, I'll give Jacob to you for the night. In other words, she's, she's using what the children have to lure the man back. And, and, and so it's crazy. How many times in relationships have we used our children as pawns? Right. Which is why they grow up with all these feelings and they take them out on everyone everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing they were valuable for is manipulating one of the partners to be engaged with the other person. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. You get some good news, right? Yeah, I, I got good news. Good. This seems rough, huh? <laughs> Here's the good news. I know this is good news. Your children will not change who he really loves. Is that good news? <laughs> is that good news? Your children will not change who he really loves. The text says at the end, <laughs> verse 22, then God remembered Rachel and listened to her and opened her womb and she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. So, so she called his name Joseph. Then he said, the Lord shall add another son. So eventually she has another son named Benjamin. Crazy thing is she dies on the table giving birth to Benjamin. But in all of this, God is still, God is still there. Mm -hmm. so, so we're talking about it in terms of relationships and this back and forth that male and females go through with bearing kids and trying to win the man with your womb. But even deeper than that is no child comes unless God gives permission for the child to come. I need to understand that too. And so the reason this number of children had to be born is so that the 12 tribes could exist. Right. Right. right? right. The 12 right. tribes had to exist mm -hmm. to really become the manifestation of who Israel was supposed to be. Because see, it's so crazy. He's still Jacob here. In a couple of chapters, he's going to wrestle with God and his name is going to become Israel. And Israel's children are going to become the 12 tribes that end up possessing the promised land. And out of one of those tribes, Judah, is going to come Jesus. So it all ends up okay in the end. But the reality is all this back and forth sometimes throws lives in the balance. Women are fighting at the club over who... Which one of their baby daddies loves them the most? Or who's, they're fighting each other over the fact we got the same baby daddy, but he loves me more. Or he visited his child, but he ain't come see yours. There, there was a situation recently, somewhere in Sumter, mm -hmm. where a child was with, where a child was with her mother and the baby daddy was there and didn't speak to the child because the baby daddy was with his current baby mama. Mm. And the child got overlooked. The mother of the child got mad and went to fight the new baby mama. Because all of a sudden, when you're with him, you don't know your own child. When you're with her, you don't know your child. Those types of situations further... Yeah, so toxic, the toxic yeah. for the kids, and I think that that's one thing that we have to remember when we we go into these types of, and I call them encounters. I, I did. I didn't say necessarily relationships because some of them are transactional. But we got to remember that eventually that toxicity comes back, and sometimes it comes through the child, 
and you're having to use the child as a pawn or as a tool or as a ploy or whatever to try to rectify the situation when that child shouldn't be put in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so here, 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 here's the assignment as we close out. The assignment is, if that's you, if you're in this kind of relationship, if you have a tie with somebody due to children, or if you're in a situation where you have multiple children, the, the time is now to try to heal the relationship and own it for what it is. Listen, I can't go back and forth with you because you're not who I love, even though we have children together. But I'm going to stop playing with you and pretending I love you by still laying with you. But that takes growth, maturity, and maturity. Yeah. Because everybody's not at that place where they can do that, which is why you have avoidance. You know, I'd rather avoid it and not have to deal with it than to say those words and be held accountable. Because real talk, when you get in the company of a baby mother, of your baby mother, of your child's mother, what happens is you remember those snapshots of when things were good. And I imagine that's probably what happened every time Jacob went to Leah's house. Even though he knew he loved Rachel, mm -hmm. when he got to Leah's house, he remembered that Leah bare his children. They had that bond. Mm -hmm. And the reality is sex is a bond. There's a tie that comes from having sex mm -hmm. that you can't take back. That, that's why in those days, sex was what sealed marriage. When you lay with them, you were mad. That's why it says, I will give Bilal to be your wife. That means once you lay with her, she's yours. Nowadays, we don't think that way. We think we can just hit it and move on and there'll be no connection. But the reality is the release of what is released during the act of sex ties you together. All right, I'm done. Sex is a bond that cannot take back, that you cannot take back. You said it right, that you cannot take back. So again, I, I, mixing of spirit, that's a good way to say it, Richard. Richard, you should have been here. Mixing of spirits, mixing of juices, mixes of, mixing of emotions, fluids, fluids. Is that better than juices? Fluid. <laughs> it is. She's not going to let me come back. I'm about to be on timeout. But again, you can't win him with your wounds, mm -hmm. but you don't have to wound him with your wound either. And, and that goes for men too. Stop laying if you don't love. Stop perpetuating false emotions and false hopes. Stop participating in the act if that's not who you're really trying to be with. This is the time now, as we deal with relationships in the raw, to fix the errors. Don't put the children in the middle. And understand that they are still gifts from God. Mm -hmm. And they can be gifts from God without you trying to foster false hope in a relationship. Appreciate the gift and be cordial with the sender. Not the sender. That did not sound good. That didn't sound good. Appreciate the gift for what it is. Your child is a gift. Stop trying to manipulate the child or try to manipulate the relationship. Just appreciate the gift. Mm -hmm. Pour into the gift. Thank God for the gift. And hold on, can I be real? Thank God he didn't tie you to who could have been tied to you with the gift. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing is, Jacob was still a trickster at this point. He was still a manipulator at this point. He was still somebody that couldn't be used by God at this point. And some, now he becomes a better man, but sometimes God doesn't let the relationship go further because he's protecting you from the possibility of who that man could be. And maybe that man just wouldn't be good for you. Same thing for the men. Maybe she wasn't meant to be your wife. I hate to say that, but the reality is maybe she wasn't. The gift is the child. Cherish the gift. Is that okay? Yeah. Can we pray? Amen. Lord. God, we knew this topic was going to be rough. But again, these are real talk discussions that we must have. 
So God, we just thank you for the ability to be open and honest and to share. Mm -hmm. God, we pray that someone will reevaluate their relationship. Someone will be so appreciative with the gift that came in the form of their child that they won't be trying to manipulate to force themselves in a relationship that wasn't meant to be. God, we honor you and praise you and celebrate you. And we're so thankful for the lessons we learn from your word. Give us strength and wisdom until we're able to gather again. In your son Jesus name we pray, amen. amen. Listen, I thank you for being on. Um, I know this was a tough topic, but again, it was a necessary topic. Um, we're gonna close, we're gonna offer the opportunity to connect. If you need to connect to Christ, we need to give your life to Christ, then wave your hand so we can pray with you. If you need to connect back to Christ, meaning you gave your life to Christ, but you strayed away and you need to be reconnected, wave your hand. If you wanna to connect to the Life Center, if you wanna be connected to this cyber community of Christ followers, then raise your hand or go to our website, www.tlcsumter.org. Wait till the tab pops open and put your email address in. Um, if you wanna connect through contribution, meaning this lesson added value and you wanna sow into the Life Center, you can do it three ways, give LaFi Cash App or PayPal, TLC Sumter. Um, Again, this Tuesday, we're back at the Red Dot Hookah Lounge for happy hour. The topic is going to be crazy. It's surviving. I don't know if it's going to be surviving David or surviving Amnon, but we're going to deal with the inappropriate relationships that occur in families. We're going to deal with rape, molestation, assault. Surviving Amnon or surviving David because Amnon was a direct result of what David did. And oftentimes the mistakes we make are, or the, the mistakes we encounter are direct results or the mistakes our children make or the mistakes that happen to our children are a direct result of, of mistakes we made. Thank you, Tanya, for your comment. Please share this. We know that this can be a blessing um, to those who hear it. Thank you for your comments. Share it and, and give a little testimony of your thought. Um, we'll see you Tuesday. Thursday, we're back on live. We're not live on Tuesday, so we invite you out to the Red Dot Hookah Lounge, 5.30, and we'll be live on Thursday evening, 8.30. We love you. We love you. Have a good week. Thank those who came and eating their food right now, yes. uh, slurping up their plate. Thank you for those who thought about coming but didn't make it. We're back here Sunday, 6 o'clock, Mocha Soul Cafe, 4668 Broad Street, and they're going to have some good food. What y'all eating? They, they had wings, past tense. All right, we love you. Bye-bye. To God be the glory.